What's up guys, it's the Project Photography back with another video and today people, today I will be teaching you how to take amazing photos on a smartphone. So just as a disclaimer guys, I'm not telling you guys to ditch your DSLRs, ditch your $5,000 expensive cameras just to, to use a smartphone to take pictures. Smartphones are a great utility to take pictures but in no way shape or form by telling you to ditch the amazing world of DSLRs because in all honesty, the, this can't replace this because I mean, we all know the capabilities of a DSLR and it's just simply amazing. But for people who don't want to, let's just say, don't want to invest in a DSLR, it's too much money, they feel like their smartphone takes amazing pictures, this, this video is for you guys because I'm gonna show you guys how to take some dope pictures with this. And the first step, frankly, is to have great lighting. Now, especially for smartphones, great lighting is huge because, well, obviously, a uh, Nikon or a uh, DSLR in general has a bigger sensor than a smartphone like a smartphone covers up this much a DSLR covers up about this much so what that means is Having a smaller sensor means that it needs to take more light in to produce a better photo. Like DSLRs work better in low light than a, a smartphone will. So having great lighting is important. And plus the best key to take great pictures in general is just the manipulation of light. If you can master that, your photos will turn out great almost every single time. And it's just a good rule to keep in mind, you know? The second tip is to fill the frame and composition goes along with it. So filling the frame is a key, crucial, important, Factor. Being able to fill the frame with the subject, let's just say taking a picture of this, I want to take a picture of the whole body, not just a part of it, not just a side of it, and you want to make the photo interesting. So let's just say I'm taking a picture of this, right? I don't want to have it just in the middle. It's a boring picture. But let's just say if I use a rule of thirds and I cut it up like this and I focus on the camera and snap a picture, then it's more interesting as you will see. The composition is better, rule of thirds applies, and it's just a better photo all around. I'll, I'll have a whole tutorial on rule of thirds and all that later, but just having a good composition and being able to take the full frame of the picture, it just makes the photo more interesting. It just cuts out dead space and you do not want a lot of dead space. Dead space can be interesting in certain, I guess, situations, but most of the time it's just not interesting. So tip number three is to use your burst mode on your smartphone. And now what burst mode sounds like is this. It's like, it sounds like machine gun, right? So it sounds like that and using burst mode is is really really crucial when you're capturing objects that are moving let's just say uh, I throw this this cap across the room like and I want to take a picture of that I would need to use burst mode like this and take a multiple pictures of the cap flying around like I'll show you some pictures here I took of my brother it was all in burst mode and this is another good example like let's just say you want to do sports photography but again you don't want to invest in one of these just use your smartphone. I mean, it's not that hard. I mean, when they're moving around, you just go pew, 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 you know? When they're moving around, burst mode, that's really what is crucial because, you know, a lot of people seem to not want to use burst mode because like, oh, it takes up too much memory and oh, it's just so much work to delete all the pictures. But nowadays, a lot of the phones are really convenient in terms of picking out the best phone because you just click on the picture you want, save it, and then delete the rest. It's not that hard. And being able to use burst mode, allows for more sharper pictures. Well, let's just say you're using, you know, a single click, you might miss a shot and you might not get the exact picture you want. So being able to use burst mode is really important. And sometimes even for like portraits, let's just say, using burst mode is kind of important too because you're able to choose the sharpest picture and you might not nail that shot every single time, you know? So that's another key feature that I find really important. Now, rule number four is probably the most interesting and probably one you never thought of. So it's to not use zoom. Now, there are a few exceptions to this, like the iPhone 7 perhaps. You can use zoom on that, but you have to only use a telephoto lens. You can't zoom in any more than that because it just makes it very, very pixelated and not pretty at all. So let's just say I took a picture right here and then I want to zoom in more. Well, there's something called your, your legs. You're, you're supposed to use your legs and walk forward so you can get the sharpest image possible. But if you zoom in, the picture just looks pixelated and it's like cropping a picture like more in and make it bigger. It makes it look less sharp. Like if I were to take a picture of, let's just say this uh, camera right here. Let's just say I go across the room and I'm like, yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in on this, right? It looks all pixelated. Whereas if I just walk closer and I just took the same picture. As you can see, it's a huge difference. And people seem to not realize that zoom does take away a lot of the picture quality. So use your legs, that's what they're there for. Think of your camera almost like a prime lens. So what a prime lens is, a fixed focal length, you can't zoom in or out, etc., etc. That's kind of what a camera is. See, if the camera was optical, like zoom, versus digital, I mean, it would make it a whole lot easier to zoom in, but it's not. That's just how things work. That's just how cameras are made. So 
please use your legs. Do not zoom in on your phone. It's just, it's just not pretty. It really isn't. And the last and final tip is just to be creative. Go out and shoot every day. Go out and take pictures every day. I mean, these are so convenient. Like, look how, look at how easy it is to carry around a smartphone in my pocket. Boom, that's it, right? But let's just say I wanted to, to get this and then have a lens on it. Oh wait, I actually need to put the lens on it. Let's say I want to put the lens on it. You know, I can't just stick this in my pocket. I mean, I probably, I probably could get away with it, but look how ridiculous this is versus just having a smartphone. I mean, a smartphone you can carry around literally everywhere. You have it on you at all times. It's just so convenient. And learning how to take great pictures on a smartphone can be a very useful tool versus just carrying around this piece of junk all day. And when it comes down to taking a great picture, it's not about the image quality or how pretty it looks. It's about your composition, your mastery of light, and all the tips I just shared. So that's just it for me. That's what I think about how to take great pictures on a smartphone. If you guys think so, if you guys agree with what I just said, I mean, go ahead, drop a like, drop a comment, drop whatever you want, drop some bomb photos down there. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, feel free to like the video. The next video is up here. Subscribe over here. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you guys for watching.